joining Joy Lee and today is our last study of our series called Out of the Grave. I have a question for you today. How many of you guys enjoy baking? Well, for me, as many of you guys you know already, I love eating. And of course, that includes baked goods and sweets as well. So I love eating them, but when it comes to baking, I am not interested because no matter what I do, I just can't figure it out. It's like science because I have to follow every single step as what they're told and there's no skipping or there's no coming back, there's no reversing the instructions. I have to follow the detailed instructions step by step. And same thing with ingredients. I have to make sure I use the same ingredients as what they tell me to do. So baking is not my hobby. Well, why am I talking about these special instructions and specific instructions? It's because Jesus knew that his disciples needed a very specific instructions for an important task that is ahead of them. So today we're going to find out what Jesus told his disciples to do. There are 66 books in the Bible, and we are studying one verse from each book. So that's a total of 66 verses we are going to study together in order. Today, we are finally studying the 22nd book. Wow, that's, I mean, we've come a long way. Well, before we do that, 
Let's say 21st books all in order together. Three, two, one, go. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, 1 Kings, 2 Kings, 1 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalm, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and finally the 22nd book is called Song of Solomon. What was that again? Song of Solomon. That's right. Now this book is written by King Solomon. And this book is a beautiful poem that expresses about love and marriage. And the way that Solomon expressed his love for his wife, it sounds very silly the way he did it in his poem. Like for example, he said her teeth was white as newly washed sheep. Ugh, that sounds silly and weird, right? But that was just the way that he described and they described in the Bible times. And I'm sure the way we express our love today, Solomon probably didn't agree and he probably thought we were silly. Today's power verse, it's from chapter six, verse three. Let's all read it together. Go. I belong to my love and he belongs to me. Amen. And that's what I did. I wrote today's book, Song of Solomon, and today's power verse. I would love to see how you're coming along with your power verse journal. After Jesus resurrected, 
Jesus appeared to his disciples to prove that he is really alive. In today's story, Jesus was ready for his next step. So Jesus called his disciples so that he could prepare his disciples for the next steps. Jesus gave them a very important, specific instructions. So let's find out what Jesus told them to do before he returned to heaven. After Jesus died on the cross and was raised from the dead, he spent time with his disciples over 40 days. During that time, Jesus told them even more about God's kingdom. Then, Jesus told his disciples to go to a mountain in Galilee. They saw Jesus there and they worshiped him. Jesus gave his disciples important instructions. Jesus said, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Jesus gave the disciples and everyone who follows him a job to do. He said, go into all the world and preach the gospel, make disciples of people from every nation. Jesus also said, baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teach them to obey everything I have commanded you. Then Jesus said, remember this, I am always with you until the very end of the age. Jesus told his disciples to wait in the city of Jerusalem until God kept his promise to give them the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come on you. You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. After Jesus said these things, he went up into heaven. The disciples watched Jesus until a cloud hid him from their sight. All of a sudden, two angels appeared. They were wearing white clothes. These angels asked, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up into heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come again. He will return in the same way that you have seen him going into heaven. Jesus left earth and returned to heaven, but he did not leave us alone. Jesus promised to send the Holy Spirit to be with us and help us do God's work, to teach people everywhere about Jesus so they will trust in him as their Lord and Savior. One day, Jesus will return to make all things new and to rule as Lord over all. When I was young, I really didn't know or understand this story. I was confused and I was a bit sad because when Jesus returned to heaven, I thought that was the end of a Jesus story because it was like watching a movie or a book and at the end it says, Jesus returned to heaven. So I just didn't understand. I thought that was the end of Jesus story. Well, as I grew older, I learned that that's not the truth at all. And his story, Jesus' story, it did not end there. When Jesus returned to heaven, Jesus sent Holy Spirit to live within his disciples. Jesus gave his disciples the Great Commission. You know the word disciple? It means a follower. So Jesus wants all of his followers to tell people all over the world how to be rescued by sin and death by believing Jesus' death and resurrection. And those who believe in this, then they will become Jesus' disciples as well. Disciples who love Jesus, they will want to obey Jesus. Now think about it. What would happen if the disciples decide not to share the gospel? Well, you and me, we would not be here worshiping Jesus. Now, it took one disciple to tell the gospel to someone and that someone told 
someone else about the gospel. And that person told someone else about the gospel. And it went on and on and it all the way to me that I received the gospel. So now I am telling you about this great news. Now it's your turn to share the gospel to someone else. Do you remember what Jesus said, what's going to happen when the Holy Spirit came? Let's find out. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Let's read it together. Go. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Amen. Jesus said that the disciples are going to share this great news to all over the world and that Jesus sent Holy Spirit to his disciples so that they can share this gospel. And this Holy Spirit, not only they only received, but we also receive as well so that we can share the gospel. You're probably wondering why Jesus decided to go back to heaven. Why couldn't he just stay here on earth so that we can go visit him at any time or interact with him? Wouldn't that be so much fun? Well, Jesus gave us a very clear answer to this question. Jesus said that he is going away because in doing so, he is going to give us something better, which is Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is fully God and Holy Spirit dwells in each one of us. So Holy Spirit is with us everywhere we go. When Jesus was here on earth, he was only in one place at a time. That means we either had to travel to go see him or we would have to wait until Jesus come and visit us. So that's, that would be inconvenient, right? Well, we don't have to worry about that because Holy Spirit dwells in us. So God is with us all the time. So God is always with us wherever we go. That means whatever we do, he is always there to guide us and to protect us. And the Holy Spirit works beautifully in our lives. It was good for Jesus to go away because now the Holy Spirit dwells and lives within us. Jesus promised us that he is going to return. And we all look forward to that beautiful day. But until then, Jesus left us with the Holy Spirit.
pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you so much for the forgiveness of our sins and the gift of eternal life through your death and resurrection. Please give us the strength by the Holy Spirit so we can continue to share this amazing gift with others. In Jesus' name, we all pray. Amen. I want to challenge you this week. I am so thankful that God sent someone to share the gospel so that I can now share the gospel with others. Jesus loved me so much that he wanted me to know him. Jesus told his disciples and gave them the Great Commission. And that includes us too. We are Jesus' disciples, his followers, so we are to share this gospel, this great news with others. So I want you to start making a list this week and start praying for those who need to hear this great news. You don't have to be afraid. You don't have to be nervous because the Holy Spirit lives and dwells within us. I'm feeling good, good, good in a crazy way. God's love changed me more than I can say. Can't keep this in, gotta let it out. Gonna tell the whole world that your love is spinning me around. Okay, guys, I had an amazing service with you today. This completes our study of Out of the Grave series. Don't forget, and you do not want to miss next week because we are studying a brand new series. You guys take care, be safe, and I will see you next week. Bye-bye.